Collapse of the Climate House of Cards. This is an overview of recent activities for Friends of Science Society's AGM, which was on May 31st, 2023. Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society, and I wanted to just give you a bit of an overview of our activities of the past few months. We moved our AGM into the springtime again because it's much more convenient for our members and not as unpleasant as going out in frosty weather. So I'm just going to run through uh, the same presentation that I did at the AGM live, um, but it will give our other members far and wide and also our subscribers a sense of the kind of work that we're doing. So on with the show. Collapse of the Climate House of Cards. I'm going to walk you through some information about why and how we think the Climate House of Cards is about to come down. But first we have a sad announcement. A sad farewell. We're sad to report the recent loss of Ernie Duchak, one of our steadfast members of the Friends of Science Society's Board of Directors. Ernie was an industrial engineer in his early career and he loved playing his violin and was part of the Center Street Church Orchestra in Calgary. Ernie would have loved to see the Climate House of Cards collapse. So last fall, COP27 was in Sharm El Sheikh and here we have Catherine McKenna and uh, Mayor of Edmonton, Amarjeet Sohi, having a great time while everybody in Canada is lining up at the food bank, they're off to another climate conference. And there were certainly some showstoppers at COP27. One was Dr. Joe Vipond here with what looks like maybe an, uh, a bag of oats on. <laughs> He's with CAPE. He's one of the medical doctors who wants to shut down natural gas and fossil fuels. I don't know what they think they'll run the hospital on. And of course there was this showstopper. Maybe people got tired of having Greta berate everyone and they tried to go with sort of catch more flies with honey approach. And this showstopper at COP27, a historic deal for loss and damage funding. Well, what does that mean? It means your pocket will be getting empty. Climate is really a make work growth project and you can see here Canada is actually in sixth place in the number of people that we've been sending to all these things and as Robert Lyman has outlined when one lists the various processes that precede and follow each COP conference of the parties one cannot help but be struck by the tens of thousands and perhaps hundreds of thousands of people who are employed in the governments of the world and in the industries that benefit from climate finance. The climate industrial complex is immense and extraordinarily well funded. Like any other successful bureaucratic organization, it thrives by constant growth. But what straw will break the climate camel's back? Prior to COP26, the developing countries submitted a report showing that funding obligations of wealthy countries should be increased to at least $1.3 trillion per year from 2025 to 2030. So that's kind of a big straw that might just break that climate camel's back. Or the Clintel report on the frozen climate views of the IPCC. This is a very big straw. This report just came out and it's the first professional analysis, independent professional analysis of the IPCC's, that's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, of their AR6 reports. And it shows that um, they're, they are obsessed with a few themes. The current warming is unique, or their favorite word is unprecedented. Climate change is all bad and it's all caused by CO2. But that's not actually what's in the reports. And you'd know that if you were a member of Friends of Science because you'd be getting our extracts and CLISI. These are done by our volunteers. This is done by Director Ian Cameron and this one by Director 
Ken Gregory, and uh, they're cranking these out um, bi-monthly, and they give you, extracts give you an overview of political climate issues, and Cly-Sci gives you an overview and summaries of recent um, climate science papers or energy papers. So they're both very handy little praises of what's going on in the world. And we pile on more straws every week. We crank out a few more videos and you can see all the videos we've done in the past half year or so. Hundreds more videos are online, so have a gander. We've also started taking on CBC in live streams and explainers. So this was a live stream that we did where we deconstructed all the baloney that CBC put in one of their reports about this report. Um, and this is a three-part series where we deconstructed the baloney that CBC did in a, an item called uh, A Closer Look at the Inescapable Math of Climate Change. So have a look at both of those, please. And they all fall down. Once you start looking at the detail behind the scenes and doing the deconstructions, you see that uh, climate change is really a house of cards and it's all going to collapse. So you'll be able to read um, our book, big book of blog posts. I'll be putting that up on our blog. And it is uh, like a little mini catalog of the blog posts and you can always click on a link and go and read the whole post. We've got many more reports and many more blog posts. Here's just a few. Less food on your fork. This one is about agriculture and the federal government's plan to reduce fertilizer. Between the implausible and impossible, this discusses the RCP 8.5 scenario that is really implausible and yet it's the most used scenario for setting climate policy. And the express bus to folly. So have a look at these reports and our blog posts. And here are some of our press releases. These go out all across North America. You can find them on the Cision PR website. Just look up Friends of Science Calgary and you'll be able to go and see each one of these. So we do really believe that the Climate House of Cards is about to fall down. Um, and some of our recent videos show you how and why. So I invite you to join us, to explore our website, donate to us, share our material. And really, we are in a fight for freedom from climate tyranny, people. So we really need all hands on deck. Um, I hope that gave you a quick overview of some of the things we've been up to in the past uh, seven months or so. And um, we'll give you even more of a roundup as we go along with our new material that we keep putting out every week, sometimes every day. <laughs> um, have a look at our two most recent videos. One is on um, Clintel's open letter to Dr. Ho Sung Lee, who is the chair of the IPCC, about the many errors and omissions and misrepresentations that Clintel found in the AR6 reports. And also we did a video about the Bank of Canada and the work of Dr. Jessica Winkle, um, who testified to the U.S. Senate that the scenarios used by banks are fraught with conflict of interest. So they're both very important elements in making sure that that climate house of cards tumbles and soon. I thank you for watching our video for Friends of Science Society. I'm Michelle Sterling.